Hello, and welcome to the October edition of Inno Games TV. On this episode, I'll bring you heaps of information on our games, I'll announce the iPad winner, and I'll give you the chance to win a new iPhone 6. Yep, so you can play Forge of Empires on the brand new iPhone app. So let's just get to it and go right to the overview. Forge of Empires, product manager Daniel introduces the new iPhone version of the game, and we also host a competition where you can win a brand new iPhone 6. Rising Generals, I introduce you to the basic gameplay of the game in a new video. Attention the West fans, we show you an almost finished version of the new multiplayer instances. Happy birthday Grappolis! Our ancient strategy hit celebrates its 5th anniversary and we present to you the new event. Welcome to the open beta. Travel Wars 2 has opened its gates and we bring to you a new trailer. Always working to make the game better, Travel Wars team shows you the changes from the last update. Last but not least, we give you more information on the Gamescom Game Jam. So let's get the show started with the brand new iPhone app for Forge of Empires. Hey guys, this is Daniel from Forge of Empires, and I would like to show you the latest news from our game, which is our amazing iPhone app. So after we released the iPad app a couple of months ago, we worked really hard on also getting Forge of Empires on your iPhone. The new Forge of Empires iPhone version works from every iPhone from version 4 on or higher, even the new iPhone 6 or 6 Plus is supported. We took the screens we already optimized for our iPad and then optimized them for the iPhone and the obvious uh, smaller screen. So now it's really cool to play Forge um, on such a small device just on the train or in the bus. We made sure that all the buttons and menus are big enough for the smaller screen so it's still convenient to play the game while you're on the go. All the features and functionalities you know from the Forge of Empires browser version are also available on your iPhone. Since it's a cross-platform app, you just need one account and you can play your existing account on your iPad or on your iPhone without starting from the beginning. Just log in with your browser credentials and keep on playing in your city. Most screens got reworked for the iPhone version, for example the tech tree or the building menus, to make sure that they really fit on the small screen. I'm pretty sure you also want to know about our Android version and I'm happy to tell you that we are already working on it and we'll update you on this topic very soon. Okay guys, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and keep playing our new iPhone app. Goodbye. Thanks Daniel for the introduction. So guys, do you remember the iPad competition from last month? Well, it's time to announce the lucky winner. So, the winner is Jorge Gama. So Jorge, congratulations, we'll be in touch and you'll get that iPad. So you're probably really excited now about the iPhone 6 that I was talking about. Well, it's time to see how you can win it. All you have to do is look at the picture right here, send us your best caption, and then send it to tv at innogames.com. And now it's time for the gameplay trailer for Rising Generals. At the end of the day, warfare is always about choosing sides. But you know, if you don't, you get to fight everyone. Hey guys, my name is Diana and today I will show you the basic gameplay of our newest game, Rising Generals. If you first start the game, you will see this huge world map. In the finished game, up to 25,000 players can battle each other on every single continent. The closer I zoom in, the more you can see all the different sectors and cells. Gray cells are neutral, red are enemies, and the blue ones are mine. On this test server, I already managed to get the control over three outposts. Together with my headquarters, I now have to manage four bases in total. My headquarters here is the center of the game. From here, I can produce fuel and components, build units, research new technologies, and many more. At this point, Rising Generals differs from most other online strategy games. Usually you have to wait some time after you have produced troops or supplies to use them, but not in Rising Generals. One click is enough and you get the produced fuel and troops instantly, and you can directly start a new attack with them. This new cooldown system allows you to take direct action and be efficient on the battlefield. So let's see if we can produce an army, get some fuel and attack our neighbor. First let's go to the barracks and get some fresh troops. As you can see here I can choose from different tanks, helicopters or jets. One other thing you can see here is our stone paper scissors system. 
Every unit has its strengths and weaknesses against another. For example, the Paladin tank is very strong against aircrafts, but weak against light and heavy tanks. To actually build the troops, I just need to select the amount of tanks I want to produce. And after only one click, the troops are instantly available. Only now the cooldown starts and I have to wait some time before I can produce the next wave of tanks. Producing fuel works the same way as troop production. Just select the amount of fuel you want, click on this button and we're ready to raid our poor neighbor. Attacking is very simple in Rising Generals. Just select the outpost where your troops are stationed and then click on army actions. After selecting an enemy's outpost, you can choose between raid and capturing it. In the next screen, we can choose the troops we want to use for the attack. They are limited to the amount of fuel we have. The troops we want to throw into battle, the more fuel we need. This time, I prepare attack pretty badly, so we can only use half of our army, but I think it's still enough. Okay, enough words, let's begin the battle. At the top of the screen, we can see the power of my army and the strength of my opponent. This time I'm pretty lucky, because my army is clearly superior. The whole fight is divided into three rounds. At first, the air force starts with a bombardment, after that, the artillery and mine layers start their work, and in the third round, all other troops enter the battlefield. So, that looks pretty good for me, I would say. The enemy's troops are almost destroyed and I haven't had that much casualties. If you do not have the time to watch the whole fight, you can of course skip it and just see the results. In this case, we were successful and we captured a new outpost, which we can now use to produce supplies and troops. Okay guys, I showed you now our new cooldown system and how to capture new provinces. I hope you liked the video and stay tuned for more information from Rising Generals. So as some of you know, Grepolis was one of our very first games, and it's celebrating its 5 year anniversary with an event. Game designer Marcel will tell you a little bit more of what you can expect from it. Hey, I'm Marcel, one of the game designers behind Grepolis. Today I got exciting news, because Grepolis just turned 5 years. The past years have been a great experience for all of us, the game, and hopefully for you as well. The game has seen many interesting additions like Hades as a new god, Grepolis version 2.0, the introduction of world wonders, the addition of heroes, the launch of the mobile version. And so we are happy that Grippolis is still thriving, enabling us to keep working on the game to deliver a better gaming experience to you. To celebrate this birthday, we will offer a very special and intriguing event to our loyal community. Beginning in October, Artemisia of the Persian Empire will try to invade all worlds by establishing one big town in each ocean, all of which are packed with lots and lots of defense units. You will have 45 days to claim one of these towns. But there is more. Each alliance who manages to claim a city will also receive a nice batch of rewards, which are directly being put into the new extended inventory. Regardless of who claimed the town, every single member of that alliance will receive the same benefits. If you are among the first four alliances to complete this task, you will even get a special award to highlight your bragging rights. The reward packages will decrease the more towns of Artemisia have been conquered, so that the first alliance will reap the greatest rewards. Just have a look at this pile of prizes. There are 9 times plus 300 population boosters, but also all kinds of other long-term boosters. What are you waiting for? I recommend recruiting some fleets and warriors, so that you are prepared when the event starts. By the way, the amount of defensive units in each town of Artemisia will scale with the age of a world. Therefore, players on new worlds will not be overstrained when trying to accomplish this task whereas players on old worlds should not become bored. We hope that you will like this event, which is all about fighting and epic loot. Goodbye! Since Travel Wars 2 Open Beta started, we're welcoming all new players with an Open Beta trailer. Travel Wars was one of the games that started the whole free-to-play movement, the whole, the whole in industry in itself. I mean, we were one of the first games out there as well. And being Travel Wars 2 is just a big thing. We have a lot of elements that um, 
that are just going to wow the player. And um, we also made a lot of improvements for the gameplay and especially the Tribal's 1 players I think will, will enjoy and, and love them. You can expect better UX, a, a better user experience when you're playing. It's going to be easier to get into the game and it's also going to be easier for you to stay. I think it's very challenging. Uh, I think it's very intuitive with the interface. Uh, Cross-platform is going to be another huge, uh, huge thing um, that you can play whenever you want, wherever you want, with whomever you want. We decided to actually make a cross-platform game. So we said we want the game to be able to be replayed on iOS devices, on Android devices, so your tablet, your smartphone. You have one account, you play your same account on all devices, whichever other device you want, and you will always reach your same account. Of course, the community is very important for us. We will always listen to the community, to what they think about the product and what they want the product to be. So we decided to make a, a sequel out of Tribe Wars instead of actually making a big modern update of Tribe Wars because we wanted to keep the, the old community who are playing Tribe Wars still there and, and keep their old Tribe Wars. I think, uh, I think the typical Tribe Wars uh, player is definitely uh, passionate and I think that's the thing that uh, drives this whole project. Um, I think the players and the community, um, they're really the heartbeat of the whole game. Of course we want you to come and play with us and uh, so sign up at Tribe Wars. .com, and I believe that we're going to be able to put, take the best from Stemme 1 and make it even better in Trial Wars 2. I'm very proud and lucky to be on this project. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to the start. I think it's going to be awesome. From Tribal Wars 2, we go to its predecessor, Tribal Wars. This month, they released two new updates, so Robert and Tomas show you the recent changes. Hi guys, I'm Robert, the product manager for Tribal Wars. With me here today is Tomas, the lead community manager for Tribal Wars, and we thought it'd be cool to tell you a bit about some of the recent features we did. So, first off, we have command sharing. We've thought for a while that it was rather difficult to coordinate attacks with your tribe mates. You'd have to copy over some timing information, post it on the tribe forum, talk to your tribe mates, get confirmation, etc. Talk back and forth about it for a while, and then finally send your attacks. What we've added now, after a poll of the community showed that they were in favor of it, is command sharing. What you can do is you can choose who you want to share your commands with, they can choose that they want to see it, and then bam, you'll be able to see the commands in the game. What I'm showing you here is one of my tribe mates' commands, and here's my attack running right alongside it. Next up, dynamic village groups. We know that players with large amounts of villages often have to spend a lot of time organizing themselves. They have to figure out per village, should it be for offensive troops or defensive troops, for example. Uh, one tool that's available for them is village groups. They can then determine what each village should be for or where it can be found, and it can be used to uh, easily access the village from various parts of the game. What we've given them now is dynamic village groups. You can now decide per group what kind of villages sh should show up in it. Uh, so, for example, you could say, in this group, I only want to see villages that have more than 5,000 Axemen. And then, uh, all villages that have more than 5,000 Axemen will show up into it and go out of it based on how many Axemen they have, which should save you a lot of organizational time. The next feature we wanted to talk about is uh, browser notifications. So, we know that uh, people playing Travel Wars are not always spending all their time on Travel Wars and generally check other tabs at the same time. To help you with that, we have decided to um, add a new feature that is a bit like what we have on your, on your phone with the notifications, and you can ha now have it in your browser, meaning that as long as you have a tab with Travel Wars playing, you receive notification when important stuff happens in the game, so you can directly go and, uh, and see what, what just happened. Um, to activate it, it's actually pretty easy. You just have to activate the browser notification um, option of your browser. Um, you will have to note that it's not available for all browsers. Another challenging task in Travel Wars is to manage the resources between your multiple villages that you have at some point. It's not always easy to find where the villages that need the most resources are and to send them accordingly. Um, this is something that was dealt with with external scripts previously and it was well liked by the players. So we decided to add this feature directly in the game so it's easier for everyone to use it. And this is what we call the stockpile distributor. 
Um, basically, the stockpile distributor uh, will help you by transferring resources from villages to other villages where they're most needed. The feature is part of the account manager. Uh, you can turn it on or off and customize it to your needs. Once your settings are done, the resources are going to start being sent at regular intervals between the different villages. Uh, it is roughly now three times a day. Okay guys, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy the features. See you in the game. Good news from the West. Multiplayer instances are almost finished and ready to be released. Kieran from the Dream shows you the latest version. Hi, this is Kieran from the West, and today I will show you a bit more about our upcoming feature, the multiplayer instances, which is now called uh, Adventures, because that's much more Western-like. And uh, let's jump right into the game and let's take a last look at the alpha map. Yeah, so here you're right into the action of our multiplayer instances. On the left side uh, and on the right side, uh, you see your, your team and the enemy team's um, team members and um, how they actually fare into the game. So you see a couple of life bars and um, you also see if um, an enemy team or your team's member is currently knocked out. Um, on the bottom of the screen, you see your action bar, um, which indicates your abilities and um, move actions you have during the multiplayer instance. The quite important part of this um, map is actually these three locations, the bank, the saloon and the windmill, because these are the so-called domination points. So you need to conquer them to gain points for your team, um, which is quite important because with uh, 35 collected points, you will win this match. Or if your enemy team collects 35 points, they will win. So it's uh, necessary to always keep in mind that you are ahead in points and conquer these locations. It's quite important to actually know that you have two action points per round. This means um, that you have two actions you can perform most in most cases per round. That is probably a move action and a shoot action or an ability. And um, so always keep in mind you always have two abilities to perform. So you see a lot of uh, elements here on the map which is uh, quite important to know because you can hide yourself uh, behind them or your enemy can hide behind them. So it's, uh, will, these elements will actually block the line of sight um, of, your, um, or of your gun, so um, you may not hit any targets in those or behind those elements. The battle is finished and I will join the reward screen now to collect my reward, which is uh, mostly veteran points. And uh, if I performed quite well, then I might have the chance to actually also loot uh, the so-called loot crate, which contains uh, special weapons and a special set. The veteran points, on uh, the other hand, I can use in the shop in the new tab, uh, which is called Veteran uh, Shop, and I can buy certain items there as well. I hope you enjoyed our little heads up into our first adventure map, which will be released in roughly two weeks, and I hope to see you in-game, in-fight. See you soon. Last month, we showed you a glimpse about what we did at Gamescom Game Jam. So let's see in more detail what it is about. Gamescom 2014. Die weltgrößte Videospielmesse faszinierte wieder einmal die Massen. Und war zum ersten Mal auch Austragungsort des InnoGames Gamescom Game Jam 2014. Es ist ein Experiment. Wir haben das noch nie auf der Gamescom gemacht. Wir haben das schon ganz oft zu Hause gemacht und wollten mal gucken, wie das ankommt wie die Reaktionen sind und bis jetzt ist es sehr positiv. Drei Teams, zwölf Spieleentwickler, Designer und Kreative und nur 96 Stunden Zeit. Wie bei jedem Game Jam gibt es auch diesmal ein Thema. Das Einzige, was wir Ihnen auf den Weg gegeben haben, ist ein Theme und das ist äh, Childhood Games äh, in die Richtung von Fangenspielen und Versteckenspielen aus der Kindheit. Erster Messetag, Punkt 14 Uhr. Es geht los. Die Aufgabestellung ist bekannt. Jetzt heißt es für Team Grün, Blau und Rot brainstormen und eine passende Spielidee entwickeln. Wir wollen äh, ein, ein Bogenspiel bauen, weil wir uns gedacht haben, okay, wir haben früher alle gerne mit Bogen gespielt, sei es nun Playmobil oder irgendwie eine Sandburg. Wir hatten so das Thema Mutproben und es geht im Wesentlichen um eine Gruppe aus Kindern, die ganz klischeebehaftet vor einem alten Haus stehen, Fußball spielen 
und leider landet der Ball in einem Fenster und die müssen jetzt in dieses Haus gehen und den Ball zurückkriegen. Ja, wir werden wahrscheinlich was in Richtung äh, Dinge sammeln und vor anderen verteidigen äh, machen, so, was man halt als Kind so macht. Die Zeit läuft in Halle 10.1 für die jungen Spieleentwickler. Und schon nach den ersten Stunden fleißiger Arbeit wird klar, was der Game Jam diesmal tatsächlich auch bedeutet. Denn direkt nebenan zocken die Let's Player von Pete Smith vor den Augen ihrer zahlreichen Fans. Wir texten eigentlich nur noch über, über einen Instant Messenger, selbst wenn wir hier nebeneinander sitzen. Es ist schon ein anderer Stressfaktor, als wenn man jetzt irgendwie in einem Büro arbeitet. Aber es ist natürlich auch mal eine Herausforderung, unter solchen Bedingungen ein Spiel zu entwickeln. Hoher Besuch am InnoGames stand. Dorothee Bär, die parlamentarische Staatssekretärin beim Bundesminister für Verkehr und digitale Infrastruktur, informiert sich. Die nächsten Alpha-Versionen flackern auf den Bildschirmen. Das Besondere am Game Jam auf der Messe, die interessierten Zuschauer können sogar Probe zocken. Ja, es ist auf jeden Fall herausfordernd und äh, was ich auch stark finde, dass man gleich die Reaktionen von wildfremden Leuten sieht auf das Spiel und äh, dass man vielleicht auch ein bisschen zuschauen kann, wie dann Leute das Spiel spielen und ja, wie die das aufnehmen, einfach was man da geschafft hat. Halbzeit beim Game Jam. Noch 45 Stunden. Die Grafiken bekommen liebevollen Feinschliff, die Spielfiguren ihren ganz eigenen Charakter. Die Spielewelten nehmen weiter Formen an, werden bunter und detailreicher. Die Versionen aller Teams sind schon jetzt fast final und die Zuschauer begeistert. Finde ich sehr beeindruckend, irgendwie so in kurzer Zeit sowas schon auf die Beine zu stellen. Total heftig, dass einfach so spielbares Zeug rauskommt am Ende einer Woche. Das ist heftig. Dann ist Schluss. Die 96 Stunden sind vorbei. 4, 3, 2, 1, Ende! Team Rot, Blau und Grün sind fertig geworden und haben tolle Arbeit geleistet. Das Team Blau holte am Ende den Sieg mit ihrem Spiel Treuhand. Wir haben halt eiskalt nach ungefähr zwei von den vier Tagen nichts Neues mehr gemacht, sondern nur noch die Sachen, die schon da waren. Einfach noch ein bisschen schöner gemacht und besser gemacht und so. Und äh, ich glaube, es war die richtige Entscheidung auf jeden Fall. Der InnoGames Gamescom Game Jam 2014. Ein ganz besonderer seiner Art und mit Sicherheit nicht der letzte auf der weltgrößten Videospielmesse in Köln. So, did that video make you interested in joining our next Game Jam? No problem. We'll be hosting our next one here in Hamburg from November 14 to 16. So just write us an email introducing yourself to gamejam at innogames.de and just wait for a response. But that's it for this month's episode. So don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Bye.